Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be going over the SWAT 556 Assault Rifle, and I do admit this was the most difficult assault rifle for me to use. This is my least favorite assault rifle in Black Ops 2, but even still, it is a very effective assault rifle if you use it appropriately. It took me a little while to master and get the hang of, but I did eventually do it, and I've got a solid review for you here today. Numbers first, and then ways to use the weapon second. This is the point in the video where I would like to run through the damage and range and rate of fire stats very quickly, but unfortunately a title update came out last night for Black Ops 2. I should say very fortunately because it was a good update. There were a lot of patches, a lot of buffs and nerfs and tweaks, mostly good things. One of the weapons that were changed the most was the SWAT 556, so I got up early this morning as soon as my Twitter went off with all the messages and started testing out this weapon to get the new damage, the new range, the new rate of fire, all these sort of things. So I'm going to be showing you some of the testing methods that I do normally to double check the weapons and all that and the SWAT is an interesting weapon this is this is just crazy so bear with me here it used to be a 40 to 24 damage assault rifle meaning that it'll kill in three shots up close and five at a distance however the patch notes say that shots to kill at long ranges have been increased meaning it's going to take more shots to kill so logically it would have to go lower than 20 damage to be at least six shots to kill and I leave these question marks here I'm assuming it's something like 40 to 19 or 40 to 18 and it's going to be a three to six shot kill at range However, my testing indicated absolutely nothing like this. The SWAT was always a 3-4 to four shot kill, depending on what range I was at. And I'm going to tell you that in reality, when you get on Xbox and you play this game, it's always going to be a 3-4 to four shot kill. And this sounds crazy, but the reason for this is because the range on the SWAT is very, very high. It's an extremely high-ranged assault rifle. I write it down as being the third longest ranged assault rifle, technically because of the damage drop profile and all this sort of thing. But like the SMR and FA AL and M8 and all these uh, low rate of fire, high damage weapons with really long ranges, they are very difficult to quantify. In short, it has an intermediate damage of 33, which will make it a four shot kill. That's between 50 and 100 meters. A lot of you ask me, how long is a meter? How long is a meter? Uh, every time I post an in-depth video, there's always somebody asking, how long is a meter? And I'm about to show you how long a meter is because this directly relates to why I say it's always going to be a four shot kill. We're going to swap over to a little bit of live commentary here on Turbine with my SWAT Select Fire and Silencer to reduce the range as much as possible. I've got a DSR-50 so that I can zoom in on the person and center on their testicle region. It's going to give me the best chance of hitting with the SWAT. When I zoom out, the range finder on the ballistic CPU says it's 311 units. I'm not sure what they are, but it translates to approximately 94 meters. I do have that conversion very well. That's a little bit less than the 100 meter uh, point where the damage drops, but we could not find a long Longer range on any map. This was the longest range we could find anywhere, and you're going to see that's one, two, three, four, four shots to kill, even at 94 meters where you couldn't even see the guy. That's why I say, for all practical purposes, this is a four shot kill weapon. That's going to be two burst or four in fully automatic mode, and you're pretty much never going to be so uh, so accurate and so far away that it's going to drop down to five or six or anything else. So just assume that it's a four shot kill assault rifle. The headshot multiplier is 1.2x damage for each headshot, or basically 20% bonus damage every time you shoot somebody in the head. This is really only useful at ranges beyond 50 meters. This is going to be a long range kind of deal because at close range, 1.2x only goes up to 48 damage, or it's still three shots to kill instead of two. However, at long ranges, when you're down to 33 damage and you're kind of like, oh, you know, I want to get a one burst kill, but not quite, if you get a headshot in your burst, that is going to make it a one burst kill. So they're very good. At long ranges, not so useful at close ranges. Even still, I would tell you to just aim for center of mass in the body because the gun does kick up and sl ever so slightly to the left. So if you aim for lower to middle center mass of the body, typically it's going to kick up and your last shot's going to be a headshot. If you aim for the head, usually you might get one, two headshots and then your third one is going to miss. The rate of fire on this weapon has also been updated today. I got up and tested it this morning. It used to shoot at 450 RPM. It now shoots at 540 RPM, which is basically an 11, 10, 12 percent increase, something like that, depending on where you want to count from. That makes it uh, a much better assault rifle. It didn't actually change the rate of fire in the of the burst, like it didn't change how fast the three shot bursts are, but it did change the delay between the bursts. And I would say that even at 540 RPM. This is a very slow firing assault rifle, but it does make it more competitive with the M8A1 and some of the other ones. It used to have a very long and troublesome burst delay. The burst delay was very similar to that of the M16 in Modern Warfare 3 or the M16 in COD Black Ops 1. You would shoot, have to wait, have to wait, have to wait. 
very difficult to use. You couldn't use uh, spam it like the M8A1 or a lot of other assault rifles, and it made it an uncompetitive weapon. Today it was patched, and it cut that burst delay essentially in half. This weapon still has, I would think, the longest burst delay of any weapon in Black Ops 2, which is probably about a tenth of a second, but it's much more like the B23R, the chi -Com, or the M8A1 now, and it has a much more competitive delay to the burst, so I think that makes it a much better weapon overall. Another positive attribute of this weapon is that it has fairly low recoil. I was almost going to put it at low to moderate because it does kick up slightly, but overall it is a very accurate weapon that has low recoil. If you use the select fire attachment, the rate of fire changes drastically. It goes up to 900 RPM, which is fully automatic and it's extremely fast. The only other assault rifle that shoots this fast is the Type 25. So when you put it in select fire mode, it's tied for, this, uh, for the fastest shooting assault rifle and it shoots just extremely fast. I can't stress that enough. You'll burn through your magazine very, very quickly and its recoil is more moderate. A lot of people have the misperception that it has little to no recoil when it's in select fire mode. What it is, is for some reason it's fairly easy to control recoil because it's mostly just vertical. It doesn't wobble side to side very much like a lot of the other fully automatic assault rifles. However, if you do a basic wall test and you don't use the stick to control it, you'll see that it kicks upward very sharply, very quickly. However, a lot like the MP7 from Modern Warfare 3, since it's just vertical recoil, you can control it pretty easily and it will feel uh, lower recoil than it really is. It has a very good feel to it, I'll say. However, the range is very significantly reduced. The three-shot kill range, or your 40 damage range, is reduced to about two meters, or about barrel stuffing range. If they're not directly in front of your face, you're not going to be getting three-shot kills. This is a balancing factor to make the weapon more fair. It's going to make it more of a four-shot kill weapon in most cases. It's going to make it a lot more like the Type 25. Uh, the four-shot kill range is very long, but the three-shot kill range is very significantly reduced. If you hear a loud bone grinding noise in the background of this commentary, that's not demons or zombies coming to get me, that's just my little dog Ozymandias that will not stop chewing on his bone no matter how much I ask him to. And speaking of demons and zombies, I have a giveaway for you here in the middle of the commentary. It's one from Gamma Labs, they're giving away what they're calling a zombie survival kit. This one is completely free, so I feel comfortable putting it in the middle of the video, as I'm assuming most of you are interested in it. They made this one just for you guys, members of Team Drift, Drifter fans, whatever you want to call yourselves. To one person, there's, there's like three or four different prizes here. The first place prize is three boxes of G Fuel, one from each flavor that's probably about 60 to 70-ish servings or a couple months worth. You're also going to win an Airsoft shotgun, an M1911 Airsoft pistol, a Gamma Labs hat and shirt. The entry link to this contest is in the description. It's the first one down there, the little bit.ly link. You can click on that and go to enter. If you enter this, you are also going to be entering into a lottery to win a slot in a live stream competition between myself and Woody's Gamertag. It's going to be Team Drift versus is Team Gamertag. I think he calls everybody Team Gamertag. I'm pretty sure he does. So it's going to be me and three of you guys versus Woody and three of his fans in a live stream event, Zombies Grudge Match on Gamma Gamer's uh, Twitch page when that goes live. Everybody will be there watching. It'll be cool. And I think they're going to pick like uh, eight to 12-ish winners, just kind of depending on how many rounds of zombies, if we're doing two out of three or, you know, winner take all, that sort of thing. So it should be fun. It should be worth entering. The link is down there in the description, and I'd appreciate it if you'd go and enter. When you click it, it's going to ask you to do some things on Twitter and Facebook like follow them on Twitter, like on Facebook, or something like that. And it's designed in a way to where if you don't have Twitter or if you don't have Facebook or whatever it is that you do or don't have, it should be very easy to enter. As far as Gamma Labs is concerned, this is a very big contest for them, so I would appreciate it if you guys could come out in force and sign up. Like I said, it's completely free, it doesn't hurt you, and it makes me look like an amazing sponsor, so I'd appreciate it. Now that we're done with this like corporate sponsorship moment, let's get back to the actual in-depth. When it comes to hip fire, I'm going to say that the hip fire is poor. Like most of the other assault rifles, it has the exact same box, uh, shape, size, decay rate, prone, standing, running, that sort of thing. However, since it's a burst fire weapon and it shoots slowly and hip fire is a random event, you want to get as many samples as you can to increase your probability of hitting. And because it shoots slow and in burst, you're not going to have a good time hip firing people. Hip fire weapons are all about rate of fire, maximum spray and pray, that sort of thing. And you can't really do that with the Type 25, so I would say, not the Type 25, my brain, derp, the SWAT 556. So I would say you should really avoid the uh, hip fire on this if you can. There are some desperate situations where I know it'll work better, but but avoid hip firing if possible. The time to kill on the SWAT 556 is 
actually pretty close to average. You would think that with the damage and range it would be fast, but not really. It's more of an average time to kill gun, nothing particularly special about that. They didn't want to make it a fast time to kill right gun because then it might be a little bit unfair. Your competing factors on this are definitely your range and your accuracy and not the time to kill. The iron sights are quite good, actually. I'm going to list them as pretty good, not my favorite in the game, but far from my least favorite. I am perfectly comfortable using these iron sights. I find that they are very good for close quarters combat and pretty good up to about medium range, medium range maps. However, they are a little bit clunky and difficult to use at long ranges. If I plan to use this weapon for long range engagements or on large maps, some sort of optics are preferred. Of all the optics that I've used, I like either the target finder or the EOTech best, and for some reason I like the EOTech better than the target finder even though the target finder is super easy to use I just don't have a uh, I don't have a feel for it with the SWAT for some reason I'm a big EOTech guy on this particular weapon the aim down sights in and out time are very standard for the assault rifle class at one quarter of a second each nothing particularly special about that it does have the fastest reload time of any assault rifle not the fastest reload animation because that reload time at the top is the reload animation time and the cancel time is the time at which the a gun recognizes that your bullets are in the magazine and you can sprint or YY to cancel, to reload cancel. It has the fastest reload cancel time among assault rifles, so if you reload cancel with this weapon, it reloads very, very quickly. Fast mags probably aren't going to be needed. Magazine size is very standard at 30 rounds per magazine. You put extended mags on it, you're going to go up to 39. Because most of the time in burst fire mode, you're going to be shooting it slow. This won't be a problem at all. If you go select fire and shoot it fully automatic, you'll burn through your magazines very quickly and you'll need that faster reload time. I've got three pieces of advice about weapon use. If you're going to use this weapon in its normal burst fire mode, it's best used at medium to long ranges. It's not a very good close range weapon at all. It's excellent at medium range and it definitely can be used in long ranges because it'll usually kill people in two or three bursts, no problem, and it's, it's quite accurate. The accuracy, however, is affected by your movement. I'm not sure if this is a subjective thing or not, but I found that sidestepping while shooting causes the burst to be less accurate. This is rarely a problem in close range, a little bit of a problem at medium range, but if you're going to go long range combat, never sidestep while you burst. This is very difficult, especially because one of the classes I'm going to recommend in a minute has a stock, and my natural instinct is to keep moving and shooting because it's an arcadey sort of game. But I found that I was just way, way more accurate if I stood still and shot versus sidestepping while shooting. Maybe that's just the way I aim, maybe it's not, but that's my recommendation. You can do close range with this weapon, but only if with the select fire attachment. If you do close range and burst fire, you'll find that it's it's very difficult unless you get people running right at you, because when people sidestep, it's a little bit difficult to track them with the slow firing burst side to side. But if you have select fire, you can definitely punish people in close quarters combat. I like this weapon better than the Type 25 with select fire when it comes to the fully automatic assault rifles that shoot fast. Not sure why, I just kind of do. But if you do use the select fire, my recommendation is that you don't always just just leave it in select fire at long ranges put it back on normal burst mode because it'll work much better that way but when it's time for some spray and pray just swap it over to fully automatic mode and do just that I've got two recommended classes for you today one of them is for what I would call normal mode without the select fire and the other one's gonna be a select fire attachment they're fairly similar the first one that I'm gonna recommend is the one that I did the best with with the EOTech sight the quick draw handle and stock with this class, I ran Flak Jacket, Toughness, and Dexterity. I really like Toughness and Dexterity. I'm going to talk about those in a minute. EOTech's my favorite site. For some reason, this just helps me stay on target better. And I like the, I believe it was the second EOTech site, the Half Circle. Quick Draw, obviously, aiming down sights faster. And in close quarters combat, the stock helps me sidestep around trouble a lot and corner people. I, you remember, do not sidestep if you're going to do long range shooting because it'll screw up your accuracy. But in close range, it's a big lifesaver. There is a, maybe a sort of alternate for this if you want to get rid of some of your grenades or if you want to drop that stock and go long range only. You could add a tactical mask along with dexterity or trade out dexterity for a tactical mask. I'm kind of a dexterity addict. I'm pretty good at avoiding the grenades and stuff so it doesn't bother me but that's definitely an option. The next class is a select fire class which is very similar. This one you obviously want to have the select fire attachment the quick draw handle and stock. This one you're going to be doing a lot of sidestepping because you're going to be putting this one in fully automatic mode and playing aggressively with your lightweight toughness and dexterity. Those are definitely going to be the perks for this one. I wouldn't recommend trading out the perks very much, but what I would recommend on this class that I mentioned earlier 
is you use this a lot to rush to spray and pray close range, maybe even medium range, the select fire is not a bad attachment, but when you set up in an alleyway or a long distance and you know you need to shoot at somebody long range, don't leave it in fully automatic mode because it's by no means accurate enough to do that. You want to swap it back over to burst fire mode and just punish people at long ranges and then swap it back over to fully automatic for close quarters combat. The select fire attachment is not made just to turn your gun into a fully automatic spray hose. It's made to give you the choice between precision and damage or rate of fire and well rate of fire like rate of fire and low damage to hose people so that's the way I use it and I hope it works good for you that way it should these are my ideal classes though ideally I probably wouldn't use this weapon very much because I just don't like it well guys that's all for this episode I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something useful if you'd like to check out my previous episode which was testing out the ballistic CPU you can click the box on the left that'll open in a new window if you'd like to check out the next episode which is on tactical mask I'll be testing that one you can click that box and that'll open in a new window whenever it goes live as always if you enjoyed the content don't forget to like favorite and subscribe drifter out